Hello and good afternoon. I welcome you to today's special webinar for JFD Brokers, Risk and Money Management, How to Find the Right Position Size. Um, I'm really sorry that uh, we, we, we are a little late here. Um, so uh, we are all using JFD. We are, we are all using the same uh, software here. And uh, I couldn't start the event since uh, the, the program just told me that there is another event running, which is definitely not true uh, since... This is the only event right now here. Um, yeah, not sure what went wrong there. So um, when I clicked the second time, it uh, started as uh, as expected. So after waiting uh, three, four minutes. Um, but nevertheless, that that um, I shouldn't bother you here. Um, what we want to do is at look at a very look at a very very um, important thing in trading in general. How to find the right position size? It's not um, uncommon that I get uh, questions from uh, students um, while um, 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 while they they study my my um, uh, educational pieces my online course, for example, um, but also people um, who are, yeah, who've just seen me um, talking about the markets in a morning meeting, doing some live tradings or whatever, have read something from me in the internet. Um, they, it's, it's not uncommon that I get emails then and uh, that they ask a very simple question. So um, I'm trading the markets. So, but what is the right position size for my trading? And um, in fact, the answer is it depends. So um, what you usually get if you if you read through uh, um, 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 books here um, good bad trading books but all of them uh, they have their let's call it um, uh, they have their um, what's the word for this one second um, in German we call this Daseinsberechtigung but not sure what is it in English what's, what's in English one second so Daseinsberechtigung let's translate this it's they have the right to exist that's perfect okay um, and uh, what what you can usually usually read in those books uh, here here are the three columns of profits for trading this is another a presentation you might remember this um, uh, this this uh, this graphic here but um, let's come back to this um, first here um, so if you read uh, a trading book, then usually you get um, an advice which is something like, "Well, don't risk uh, more than one percent of your of your trading equity, uh, probably less than that." And usually, what you will um, have if you have a professional trader, um, take, let's take me for example. So I'm 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 not just trading uh, my own money, but but I'm also a, I'm a manager for clients' money. So I'm also having a managed account with a license umbrella and everything. And um, so there are clients who say, well, please uh, um, trade my money. I don't have the time to do it or um, I, I want to diversify my portfolio and I want to uh, first bring my personal trading on a certain level to manage all of my funds here. Um, and till that point is reached, well, please manage some of my, my money with an with an, a profitable trading approach here. And so what I usually do is I risk less than 1%, um, which is mainly due to the fact to make sure that the drawdowns are not as excessive um, um, as, as um, you might have seen several drawdowns occur in your own trading but also in a trading approach from someone else probably someone trading uh, um, also well is this what he says from a professional uh, point of view here so there are several um, so-called trading pros and gurus out there who have uh, drawdowns which are ridiculously high and um, so what what you usually try to do is you try to avoid massive drawdowns this has also something to do especially if you're managing money for example that you want to avoid um, a, a too huge too big drawdown here since um, uh, the performance fee you, you generate, so you're, you're getting money for making money for someone else, um, it is on a so-called high watermark principle, meaning um, you have to um, 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 overcome this threshold every month again and make more money than the month before, so you have to overcome this high watermark here. Um, and this is this is the only way you can generate a performance fee. So the difference between the old high watermark and the new high watermark is um, is the amount on which your your performance fee is generated on. So now just imagine you're making let's say something like five percent in one month, which is tremendously good. You're making five percent a month, and then um, you see a drawdown 
um, of let's say 10% or something. So um, or dropping from plus 5% to minus 5%. So it's a little, a little more than, than, than 10%. And then the first, uh, so you have to make back those 10% and then you, you, you finally reach the point, the high watermark level, where you then say, well, um, I will, um, I have to overcome this and from there I'll start to make money. Okay, so what you want to avoid as a professional trader, especially a money manager, what you definitely uh, want to um, avoid is to have two massive drawdowns. It's not just that you as a professional money, professional money manager want to avoid this, but you also want to avoid this if you're a client. You don't want to see that, that the uh, money manager is probably losing, let's say, 20% of your money first before he starts making money or something. Um, this is definitely something you don't want to see. Um, and uh, so here the thing is that usually you say, I take a more conservative approach and I try to minimize those drawdowns, even though on the other hand, I'm taking risks in my trading. So meaning, if and, and trading is, um, and this is by the way something you might have heard already in the, the, the webinar where you also know the current slide from the profitable trading and the columns of profitable trading here. Um, when, uh, when, when I told the, the audience, well guys, be aware of the following, trading is um, one of the yeah, this, this is one of the one of the least uh, um, uh, jobs you wanna you wanna do. So you can make lots of money, definitely, and you have probably if you're making money, you have a lot of fun in your life. You feel like you have a lot of fun in your life. But most of the people out there just see um, the amount of money the trader probably made, but they do not see. Um, what what happened here on the surface? How many wounds are there, and and how much pain uh, he went through to get to this point? So it's it's like a bodybuilder, let's let's say. So everyone looks at the bodybuilder, see the the big muscles, and then says, "Wow, bam, this guy probably is in steroids or something." And and then he's just like, "Do you know how much pain I went through to look like this? If I'm on steroids or not, that doesn't really matter here." Um, but uh, the thing is. Um, that you have to work really, 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 really hard um, uh, to to really look like that. So, by the way, um, um, Antonio just asked a question. What's your opinion, your opinion about this? Uh, no drawdown, no profit. Um, that's an that's an interesting question. I'm I'm not sure if I, I mean drawdowns are natural. Um, they should be natural. If you face a system which doesn't um, show a drawdown, then usually um, something's going wrong there since no drawdown means you have a hit rate of 100%, which is um, unusual. But I would uh, slightly adapt this saying, probably saying um, no risk, no profit. So um, you're getting paid for taking risks and uh, rather sooner than later there will be a point when you definitely lose some money. So um, all in all, I think um, we are on the same side here um, So with this, uh, with, with this saying. Um, so now let, let's come back to to, uh, to the position size. So what you want to see is first of all you want to make sure that drawdowns are small, um, but on the other hand you want to make as much money as possible for all the pain you you have to go through and to take um, um, when you're trading the markets. So and to um, walk this thin line, this is what trading trading is um, most of the time about here. And um, in fact, what we will do today is we want to have a look at um, the right position size, but from a purely mathematical standpoint. So um, to, to close this cycle here, um, what I initially said was um, that I don't agree with the saying um, just risk 1% per trade and probably professional trader le um, um, risks less than that. There are times when a professional risks more than 1% on a trade. This is especially true if he has an advantage in his trading or this is especially true, a bigger advantage in his trading or this is especially true when he's on a, let's call it a roll, when the market conditions are in his favor. This is something you have to, to, um, to, to realize or this is one of the jobs a trader has to realize when he has an advantage and a high advantage um, or a big advantage in the market and then start making more money out of that. This is like, you, know, that you, could, you can easily compare this to playing blackjack for example. So you probably have heard of counting cards. Um, so, and if the deck is hot, well you bet more since you have an advantage then and you try to increase the position size while you decrease the position size in moments you do not have such an advantage. So this is 
all in all what trading is about here and um, this is this is where where it's it's not really helpful to, to just say well just risk one percent per trade there are times when you risk more there are times when you less risk uh, when you less when you risk less than that and um, so Let's first of all look here at the three columns of profitable trading again. So profitable trading from my personal point of view and based on my personal experience is based on those three columns, risk and money management, trading psychology and a strategy with an advantage. So all those columns, they interact with each other. You can't just be an expert on risk and money management and be a profitable trader. This won't work since risk and money management and trading psychology, for example, they, these two columns, they interact with each other, as does risk and money management and the strategy with an advantage, since we come also to the point position sizing. So um, if, you, if you have a strategy with an advantage, the question remains, what's the optimal position size to get an optimal capital growth? While in terms of trading psychology, this position size you probably um, have found out for your trading strategy could be a problem for you in terms of trading psychology, respectively uh, the mental side of your trading, since it could be that the um, strategy says, well, risk 2.5% per trade, and you just say, well, this is too much for me. I, I can't stand this mentally. So, And now you can see this simple example perfectly shows that those three columns obviously interact with each other, and it's very rough. So you can go in much more detail here, which we won't do today, but um, this perfectly shows uh, where we want to go here in the uh, in the next um, um, slide. So we remember, is one column missing? Being profitable in your trading is nearly impossible since all columns interact strongly with each other. And in our case today, we want to definitely have a look at the following risk money management and trading psychology. So working, respectively trading with an adequate position size has consequences on the mental stability. This is what we want to focus on today. Um, as Consequences on the mental stability of the trader, which makes perfect sense since the position size, which is far too big, will lead to a behavior of fast profit trading, a profit taking and letting losing trades run. So what do I mean by that? Just imagine you have a, you have a nine to five job and you're making, let's say, net three, three grand a month. So now imagine the following. You um, have a grandma who says, well, here you have 500,000 euros, um, just do something nice with that. And then one day you come along about a, um, a video of, say, Mr. Jens Klatt, and uh, you just say, hey, that what this guy tells me, tells here, sounds really great, fascinating, exciting, it's about trading, well, I want to learn this myself. So now you start to, to uh, yeah, to, to trade, and, and you, you probably read a book which said, well, risk 1% of your um, trading capital per trade, and you should be fine. Meaning in the case of a 500,000 euro account, you should risk 5,000 euros per trade. Now imagine you say, well, I want to trade the uh, market opening in the DAX or uh, market opening in the, uh, the S&P right now. Um, and you're trading on a five minute time frame here. And um, based on a simple approach like open range breakout, this is the usual um, approach I present to the audience in the morning meetings I do on a daily basis respectively. Um, uh, the um, uh, DAX long or short, which took place here in the morning, um, you formulate a trading setup and then you see the market moving against you immediately. So let's say you had an initial risk of, make things easy here, five, um, 50 points, making uh, um, a risk of, of, of um, uh, 5,000 euros, 1% 1 from 500 grand, um, making um, 1.100 euros. Okay, so now just imagine the following. The market moves against you. Um, and the market moves against you, say, I don't know, 25 points, probably 30 points. So 25 points is the half of 50 points initial risk. Um, 30 points is a little more than that, 60%. And the market moves against you that way. So, um, and it doesn't look good for your trade. It looks as if you're getting stopped out rather sooner than later. And once again, we're trading the market opening, so we are trading um, on a five minute time frame. This could easily happen in 10 to 15, 20 minutes probably. So uh, therefore, let's have a look here at what happened in the morning in the DAX. By the way, um, something you have to remember, that's a trading related thing I just want to emphasize here. Tomorrow, 12,300 points, this is getting really, really interesting since this level has a huge open interest here. In two weeks, there's an expiration date here. 
and um, or already today the DAX dropped significantly below 12,400 points but that 12,300 could get really interesting since if we break below this the market is about or has about another 300 probably yeah 250 200 250 to 300 points potential on the downside to close this gap here so this is the daily chart so just um, this in this case so but the rest on this topic tomorrow in the morning meeting 9:30 a.m. GMT um, so this by the way not a webinar but then uh, taking place via a YouTube live stream so you don't need to download anything but just check the uh, um, uh, the YouTube channel from JFD brokers so now let's have a look here this is uh, what happened here in the morning so that was before this all this happened here so just this okay so um, what happened here so just imagine the following you went short on this well is this is this realistic but I just imagine let's, let's just say yes it is so you're getting triggered here this is not realistic since usually you're getting triggered here with a breakout or on this side doesn't matter and um, now the following happens here so you're getting triggered and you see the market moving against you you're getting triggered here uh, this is um, um, Central European time, which means it's uh, 6.45 um, GMT. Market moves against you immediately. So you're working with an entry here at uh, 12,462. You're working with a 50-point stop, which is like, I don't know, somewhere here, 12,512. And the market moves against you, trading as high as 12,492, um, which is 30 points this is 30 points moving against you, 1 point, 100 euros. So you're losing here in 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes. You're losing 3 grand. Usually you would go to work for this one month. So 40 hours a week. Probably you don't even like your job. And now you're losing this kind of money, this amount of money here in, uh, in 20 minutes. Do you really think you would, you would, uh, um, 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 you, you could stand this pain and then you, you would say, oh, no, no problem. I just lost 3 grand doesn't matter so usually if the market keeps on moving against you so you're not getting stopped out obviously obviously you're not it's, it's it's just 30 points from 50 but you start to 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 sweat already here I bet and the more the market moves against you and the closer the market moves towards your stop the more likely it is that you just take out the stop here and just say well rather sooner or later the market will turn around you just start to hope that it will turn around rather sooner than later okay so this is the first tendency so you don't you're not really capable of taking such a huge loss, especially not after such a short period of time. On the other hand, imagine the following. You're on the right side of the trade. So you're working here with an entry at 462, putting a stop here at 512 again. The market moves in your direction. Ooh. Moves as low as 12,437 points in this case, 50, 25 points for you. 100 points. Uh, 100 euros per point, making it two and a half grand you're made here. And this, by the way, in 20 minutes too, on the downside. Not bad, right? So usually you go work to work for this uh, for one month, 40 hours a week, four weeks, 160 um, hours a month. Meaning you just made the same amount of money, nearly the same amount of money um, in uh, 20 minutes. So what would you say? Would you take the money? I bet you will. Everyone would. If he's not mentally stable, or if he if he can, um, if he starts to think that's no mentally stable is a, is a wrong word here. Um, probably we should call it if you're um, not used to see such fluctuations in terms of money in your P and L, um, or if you do not know what you're aiming on in your trading. Well, you usually tend to uh, take the money here, right here. The only problem is, well, and this is the thing, I mean, it's, it's a perfect example of what could happen if, but just imagine the following, the market moved against, against you again and then had it south aggressively. So moving here from 462 to as low as 3, well, let's say here, 3, 330, 332. This means you just made four times, potentially four times the amount of money um, you usually make a month. So you had four monthly salaries here after around two hours, three hours of trading. So um, these moves make your trading potentially profitable and this is exactly what I'm talking about in terms of the position size it's just possible that the position size 
you're, you're, you're uh, using here when saying, for example, risking 1% per trade, if I'm trading a 500 grand account, it's just too big because it does not fit your personal, life, personal lifestyle, your, your living situation, your job. You, you, you start, you still, and you will keep on thinking in terms of money all the time. And this is one of the reasons why you do not cut losers short since you say, hey, I can't afford to lose um, one month of salary here in, in, in less than an hour if the market moves against you. And on the other hand, you're not capable of letting winners run um, since you say, hey, I just made, I just made the amount of money. Um, I usually make a month here in 20 minutes. Great. I take the money. So, and this is the problem, and this is exactly what I'm, what I'm, what I'm talking about here, um, that risk and money management, position sizing, and trading psychology, they interact strongly with each other. And um, so now let's come to the, to the topic here, the, the, the topic um, in terms of the position size, since it's um, probably even more interesting for you now to, I mean, we, we could take this here from a, from a very um, uh, practical uh, perspective and at the end come to something which usually you find everywhere else. So right now, um, what we want to do is uh, we want to make sure that the position size, the right position size, um, has two things. Um, to, uh, or or um, achieves two things here. First of all, it should keep potential drawdown small. This is the thing I already um, talked to you, uh, told you in the introduction of this webinar. But also on the other hand, and this is also something I already mentioned, it should lead to an optimal growth of your equity curve. And now what we will do is we want to ignore one. So we do not look at um, here at at a potential drawdowns. We don't give a we don't give anything about it. So we just focus on the optimal growth of the equity curve, even though I will show you several steps how you could start to think about one here. So one possibility is to use the so-called Kelly criterion. So probably you've heard about this. It's um, that It wasn't such a big surprise that I mentioned already blackjack at the beginning. So this was usually um, uh, a criterion which uh, Kelly um, 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 formulated uh, after asking himself how he could increase the bet size when playing blackjack here to uh, make sure that he comes out ahead when playing while reducing, respectively avoiding any chances of going broke with this approach. So this is what Kelly aims on. And uh, Kelly answers, the criterion answers exactly this question. How can I create the optimal growth of my equity curve if I know certain parameters of my trading strategy? And this, by the way, is something where you then can see, oh, great. So it's not just about, um, he will tell us now um, um, how, to, how to optimize the equity growth, here, uh, the, 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 the capital growth here, but you can also see, obviously, you have to make uh, you have to do a lot of homework here since you obviously have to formulate a clear trading strategy. If you do not have a clear trading strategy, well, you can't formulate um, uh, um, the, 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 uh, the, um, the amount of money or the, 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 um, the position size um, adequately. And uh, this is something which is, which is in fact um, crucial here where you can then see, okay, obviously this makes perfect sense also in terms of this um, graphic here since we are not just talking about risk and money management and trading psychology but obviously also we are talking about having a strategy with an advantage which we try to optimize in terms of capital growth and uh, this is by the way something and I can already tell you this if you have such a strategy and it doesn't matter where the motivation to formulate such an approach comes from if you have such a strategy you're ahead uh, let's say you're ahead of about 90% of, of all the other traders. So you, you definitely have an advantage. You know what to do, when to do it, and how to act accordingly, and then try to make money trading the markets. And um, so let's look at the Kelly formula. First of all, it's very simple. So it's uh, two times multiplied with P. F is the, uh, is the amount you're risking in your trading per position. Two times multiply P minus one. That's it. Where F is the amount you're risking per position in percent, and P is the hit rate. So now the problem is, obviously, um, where 
is the payoff ratio, for example. So um, just do a little example here, but um, I can tell you we have to adapt the strategy in terms of our trading. We definitely have to. The payoff ratio, by the way, is the ratio of average winner to average loser here. So the example is if the hit rate of our system is 60%, let's say, um, Kelly says that the optimal growth of our equity, to get the optimal growth of our um, equity curve, we have to risk two times multiplied with 60%, 0.6, subtract 1 and get 20%. Now imagine the following. Just imagine you're obviously having a hit rate of let's say 40%. What happens? 40%, you multiply 2 with 0.4, you get 0.8 minus 1 is a negative. Uh, negative result, it's minus 20%. So obviously you can play Kali then, but we definitely know that with a hit rate of, 20, uh, of 40%, we can easily be profitable. Um, let's say the um, average, the ratio between uh, of average winning trades to average losing trades um, is 2.5 to 1 or 2, 2 to 1. Um, this means we have a positive expected value and obviously we could play Kelly since we're making money even though this formula does not allow us to, to use Kelly here. So this is the main reason why we have to adapt this formula. And um, yeah, obviously the formula has to be modified since it completely ignores a very important aspect in your trading, the so-called payoff ratio. So, um, and this is uh, something here which is uh, written down with POR. So you have the hit rate minus and then the loss rate divided by the payoff ratio. And um, F is the amount you're risking per position in percent, obviously, and POR is payoff ratio. Um, average winner through average loser. So the example here says the hit rate, and now it comes to 40% is on average, um, uh, is, is our hit rate. And on average, we're making three times more when we win um, as uh, when we are losing. So the payoff ratio is three to one, respectively three. So if we this, Put, uh, if we put all this in the formula, we get the following. So we have 0.4 percent. It's it's um, uh, 0.4. Sorry, it's 40 percent minus here. Obviously, the loss rate. It's uh, the uh, negative re the result of the of the hit rate, which is 0.6. You divide it by three, and then you get 20 percent too. So the problem is. If you if you look at the following, um, already here. So what you can see is 20 percent. If you risk 20% per position, obviously this is too much. Okay, this is even too much if you're if you're mentally completely stable and can ignore the mental ups and downs in your trading. It's just too much, um, um, and this is something which which has to be adapted accordingly. And where we will then see a first idea of how even if we ignore, if we try to ignore one, we'll nevertheless come back to 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 one here and try to to adapt this a little. So, now, we do the following. We have a simulated example here. We call it a Bernoulli distributed Monte Carlo simulation. You may have, may have heard about this. It has uh, two outcomes. It's one and zero. So one is a winning trade, zero is a loss trade. Um, the hit rate of this system I just show you will be 30%, so quite low. The average winner will be 150 euros. The average loser will be 50 euros. So the um, obvious uh, payoff ratio is 30, uh, 3 to 1. So average winner is three times as big as the average loser. And you get the following. This looks quite amazing, to be honest. Oh, by the way, uh, this is this is German here. I, I have to adapt this. It's the number of trades here on the x-axis and uh, x-axis and then here it's the capital growth. So we start with a, a 5,000 euro account and we run this 500 um, uh, times, so 500 trades. So, and this is the um, capital growth. So Kapital is German for capital growth. And um, as you can see here, it's stable quite a while and then it shoots through the roof here at the end. So obviously you can already see here, you, you see some significant drawdowns. Um, this is mainly based through the hit rate, which isn't that great. And if you run up the account to, let's say, 1,500 um, um, euro here, and you see that you run um, this this uh, account up to this level to nearly plus 30% in the first 50 trades, it takes another, um, how long? One, 250 trades here to uh, to hit this level again. 
So now we come back to the to the to the um, um, uh, to the high watermark principle. So for you as a money manager, this is this is horrible <laughs> since you have to wait very very long since you start to make money again. But then if it starts, if if your performs well, well obviously you're making a lot of money here thanks to this high watermark principle. But um, this is something you have to remember here. So um, the hit rate, even if 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 I say well don't try to influence it and least you have to somehow find ways how to reduce um, uh, um, the drawdown here if the hit rate in your trading isn't that great. Um, so now let's come back here. This is this is what you can expect after 500 trades. So obviously you're nearly up 80, 90 percent, which is which is really really great. Even though, let's do the following. Let's optimize the um, the, the position size with Kelly. So what we know is that F is by the way. Uh, TQ, I'm sorry, this is not good. So TQ is uh, is the hit rate, so it's HR here, and VQ is uh, is the loss rate. So TQ is Trefferquote in German. Um, I didn't I didn't change that as I did in the example before, but um, you can see here those 30 percent. This is the hit rate. This is the loss rate, 70 percent. And then you can see that the um, optimal position size, which creates the optimal growth of your equity here, is 7 percent. So suggest we have a 50,000 euro trading account. So seven risk per trade, seven percent risk per trade is three and a half thousand euros, which is still very big. And um, even if we are not risking 20 percent, seven percent is still huge. And um, even if you're a very aggressive trader and can handle emotional swings in your account well, um, we should do the following. So we could reduce the risk of ruin here. Um, by 50%. So the maximum drawdown you're willing to take, this is the risk of urine if you want um, in this case. So if uh, let's say the max drawdown you're willing to take and when you stop trading your, uh, when you stop your trading and overlook what's going wrong, you reduce this by 50% from initially 100% from 50,000. So you're in fact just trading a 25,000 euro account. Meaning that if you're then taking 7%, it's now half of uh, 3,500, which is 1,750 euros per position. This is 3.5% risk per trade based on the original account size of 50%. By the way, by doing that, you still get the optimal capital growth of 75% which is still quite good. So, and the further step to reduce volatility here in the equity curve is, for example, to take the square root of this result here. Um, in this case, 3.5%, you take the square root of this, which is still 1.8% per trade. So, obviously, you, you, what you try to do is to, you try to make sure that the drawdowns you're facing are not as huge as, um, as you, as you, um, uh, might face the moment you're risking 7% here. Obviously, the drawdown will be bigger. This is something you will definitely see here because what I did is um, I simulated uh, um, the second se example here. Let's go ahead um, with the adaptive position size and see what we get after 500 trades. Well, look at this. I mean, not so bad. But, and this is the thing, um, as you can see, you get obviously a better capital growth here or better performance, so you're nearly doubling your amount of money, the amount you're, you're, um, you're making here. This is nearly 200% if you start out with a um, 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 5,000 euro account. By the way, I, I just did this for a 50,000 euro account. Um, I'm sorry, this, this is not right. This, this, is zero to, this is too much. One second. I changed this since I'll definitely forget it about it. So first of all, this is hit rate, this is the loss rate, and uh, so we are trading a 5,000 euro account. So this, this will stay the same, and then they do this, this, which is this, and this, and then we do this. So 50%, do I have it? Yes. Okay, so perfect. Um, so obviously, this is uh, this is very impressive what we get to see here. Even though, look at the following. So you're starting out with a 5,000 euro account. You run it up to nearly 8,000, and then you nearly drop over the next 100 trades from here. So 50 trades, you're making 60%, uh, which is huge. Um, and then you see a huge backdrop here. 
and you fall, the next 100 trades, you fall down to nearly plus minus zero, which means you just lost uh, 3,000 euros from 8,000, which means a drawdown of 37.5%. And this is exactly what I was talking about. Um, this is something which is probably okay for you in your personal trading, but it's definitely not okay for you in your uh, when you're managing clients' money, for example. You just won't find any investor who's willing to give you, or a serious investor, let's call it. So there are probably gamblers out there saying, hey, um, you, might be, uh, you might know something about trading. I don't. So here is uh, amount X, let's say 50,000 euros. Just trade with it and let's see what happens. If you ask him, hey, um, what kind of drawdown are you willing to take? Um, or what position size? Are you, and he says, well, I don't care. What I want to see is that you make me money. And then we'll get money too, and everyone will be happy. So just, just go out and trade, and uh, don't mind if, if you blow away the 50,000, if you, yeah, blow away the 50,000 euros. Um, this, is not, you, this is not happening that often. So usually you get clients who say, well, um, what I want to see is a max drawdown of, let's say, 10%. Um, and in this case, obviously, such an approach and being that aggressive here in your trading is obviously... Um, not the right way to trade the, the, the account. So uh, this is something which is, uh, which is used, and this is something I have I've formulated here, a summary. The Calico Sharion is giving you the chance to find out the optimal position size for an optimal growth of your equity curve while ignoring potential drawdowns. Okay, so very, 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 very aggressive. But Using Kelly when finding your position size does not mean that you get a better performance. So, for example, when you're trading leveraged products and pushing the envelope piece too far here, you'll probably face massive drawdowns and potentially kill your account. This can happen to you. So, even though Kelly um, says, well, um, uh, you, you, you can't wipe out your account, well, this is true if you're trading a so-called true product, a spot product here. But this is not true if you're trading leveraged products here. So if the market moves aggressively against you, like it did during the Euro um, um, Swiss franc debacle here, the S&B debacle in, in January 2015, or look at the flash crash in, uh, in the British pound in October 2016, look at the Brexit. Um, if this happens to you and you're facing especially fast market conditions and, 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 and massive slippage, well, trading leverage products here, even though it shouldn't be possible um, and to wipe out the account with Kelly, um, it doesn't really um, look at those components in your trading which you face on a daily basis. So you can't do anything against this, and that's something you definitely have to make sure that you understand this. So it can be that if you push the envelope P24, you probably face a massive problem. On top of that, by the way, it's not sad that using Kelly here um, overall increases the performance since there is a point when increasing your position size, even if you have an uh, uh, advantage here, will result in uh, the um, um, equity growth, optimal equity growth, to go massively down. This is something you have to remember here too. So, and this is a potential solution, what you could do. So if, if you're a money manager and you're saying, hey, I love this, I love using Kelly, um, because it, it's a perfect um, way of, of getting an optimal capital growth while trying to ignore potential drawdowns, what you could do is you could use some of the trading capital you're managing, or also the same goes for, for, for a retail trader, what you could do is take some of your, take a portion of your trading capital and say, hey, this is the amount of money I'm willing here to trade with Kelly and the rest I'm trading in a very conservative way. And, um, and uh, well, this, this um, um, will give you, if it's successful and if you're performing well, gives you an extra um, 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 amount of, of money, respectively, performance, uh, performance on top here. And um, on top of that, Kelly perfectly shows that you need to have a trading strategy. That's already something I, I mentioned here with the positive expected value or edge, since if you don't have this, and even, and this is something you probably um, may have, um, may have um, seen here already, so what we did was, oh, by the way, let's do it here that way. So what we did is we already had a look at this here. So the moment with the simple Kelly formula, the hit rate drops below 50%, you're not getting a positive result. If you're not getting a positive result, well, you can't use Kelly. 
This is not true since a hit rate of 40%, for example, and the payoff ratio of 2 to 1, 3 to 1 will make sure that here, um, in, 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 this, in this case, you're getting a positive expected value, so you have to somehow get the payoff ratio um, in this formula, which we do right here. So now the thing is, um, if, if we here, for example, oh wait, one second, please. I'm taking this over here. So if, if, we, if we here, for example, have a trading strategy with, which doesn't have a positive expected value, also with this formula, we are not getting a positive result for Kelly. So just imagine the following. You have a hit rate of 40%, which is uh, here. Here's the loss rate of, of 60%, 0.6. And then you have a payoff ratio of 1, which is one, uh, the average winner equals the average loser. So obviously, the expected value is negative here. So if you fill in 0 0.4 and you subtract 0 0.6, you get a negative result. You can't use Kelly anymore. And this is something which we, what we already uh, mentioned here, or what, 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 this is summary, what, what this summary is about here. So Kelly perfectly shows that you need to have a trading strategy with a positive expected value, respectively. You have to have an edge. If you do not have an edge, well, you don't get a Kelly optimized position size if you don't have such a strategy, respectively, if you don't have an edge. Meaning, if you now look at your trading journal and you find out, you, you want to, to test this, and you, you say, hey, I look at the Kelly formula here, and um, one second. Oh, it doesn't work. That's not so good. One second. Uh, here, let's do it that way. So if you now Mm -mm -mm. take this formula, not this one, but this one, the optimized formula. If you now take this, look here, look up your trading results and you test it and you find out that you're not allowed to use Kelly, you get one very, very important information. Your trading strategy has not been profitable so far. It doesn't mean that your trading strategy is not profitable, but you should start to work from here. And you should start and say, hey, one second. If I'm not allowed to use Kelly, obviously I'm losing money in my trading. Do I lose money in my trading because the market conditions are unfavorable, or do I lose money because my trading approach is not favorable? And by the way, if you do not, if you can't do this, if you can't look up your trading journal right now, this is the next step um, you should do before formulating such a trading strategy. Such a trading strategy, you have to have a trading journal to be capable of doing such research here on your trading. If you don't do this, if you do not have a business plan, which is which equals a trading strategy, and on top of that, you do not write down what your business is about, well, you definitely have a lot, a lot of trouble in your trading, a long term, and you're potentially, um, you're potentially losing money in the long run. And this is something you have to remember here when, uh, yeah. When, 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 when trying to find out whether probably uh, here Kelly is the right one for you. So here the summary once again. So first, or I have to, to look up the questions here. Um, Oh, you don't know this. Um, the question, very easy question. Um, um, how to know um, if the market is moving in one direction or the other? Well, that doesn't matter, in fact. That does, just doesn't matter. So what you have to do is you have to, um, first of all, formulate an idea of what you want to trade. And um, if you have such an idea, well, you um, start to get data and you backtest this, um, this idea. Uh, so saying, for example, um, Simple trading strategy like, I don't know, we had, we had a webinar on, on FX Street, by the way, that was um, two days ago, that I, I did this, this webinar together with um, 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 Stefan, Stefan Frikowski, and he's a PhD in physics. He is a statistic nerd, and he has tons of data, and he's running this, uh, he, he formulates an idea, and then he uses the data to backtest it for 10 years and see whether the approach performed well or didn't. So what he did, for example, here was he per, um, formulated an idea for, for power candle principle. Or um, the other idea here is, by the way, let's, let's do it that way. I'll, I'll give you the link to this, um, but I have to see whether, whether I find it. Uh, oh, one second. I know where the link is. So I'm not sure whether I find it here, but... 
I can tell you that I know I've sent this link to someone else. One second. It's... It's... Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? One second. One second. Perfect. Here it is. So, here is the link. So, um, so this is Stefan, by the way, and I've given, for example, an idea on uh, on a trading strategy. How can you can formulate such a strategy here? Um, probably it makes it makes sense um, to. Doesn't work. Oh, okay. Wrong chat box here. So. Here's the link in the chat box. Um, you can see that um, obviously, if you if you if you have such an idea and if you back tested it, then it's highly likely that this approach um, will keep on being profitable here in the future too. Um, it's like like having a trend here if the idea itself is is uh, is good and 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 makes sense here. And um, so what you will find out then is that trading is not about calling the direction of the market, but trading is about trading a system with a positive expected value. So, in fact, if you look, for example, at the following here, um, the formula for the expected value, formula for the expected value is the average winning trade multiplied with the hit rate, and you subtract the average losing trade from it and then you multiply it with the loss rate so and um, if the overall I call it EV here expected value is bigger zero then you're making money you are making money with your trading so this means that um, if you, for example, have an ex um, um, have have a result here saying 0 0.2, okay, the expected value is 0 0.2. This means that for each euro you're risking in your trading, you're earning 20 cent per trade. And it doesn't matter if the market goes up or down, goes in your direction or not. If the strategy has proven that it's profitable, then well, you should you should go for it. it the idea itself is good, and Based on a risk and money management plan, which will bring you to an adequate position size, you will then um, um, you, you can try to capitalize on that, and you you can try to earn those twenty cents per risk euro here the long run. And um, if the system is stable, is robust, and has shown that it makes sense and it works, like I don't know the, the idea. It sounds simple, but it's like like some selling ice cream in the summer at the beach. That makes perfect sense. Why is someone losing money here? Because he has not an adequate risk and money management plan. Because um, there is a huge uh, um, a competition there. Sure. I mean, everyone knows that everyone wants to have an ice at, at the beach, right? And so there will be plenty of, of, of um, um, guys who want to sell ice cream. Uh, but all in all, you have to find this advantage in your trading. It's a lot of work. It's definitely a lot of work. And for example, right now I'm, I'm working on uh, getting my, my online course, I have it in German, to get it translated into English. Um, it's it's huge, a huge amount of, of work, a huge workload. Um, but, but all in all, um, this is, for example, something which many courses are missing. Um, it's, I, I don't think it's just a German um, 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 a phenomenon here, but it's also an English one, that many of those online courses um, they lack the depth, they lack the structure um, of, of um, um, what profitable trading is about. So many people say, hey, here's a strategy and now go for it. Well, if you just do not know what's in the strategy, if you do not know how to adapt the strategy accordingly, it doesn't make sense. It's like, I'll, I'll give you a fish, well, and you're, um, you're fine. You're, um, you, you, you don't need to be hungry today. The problem is you have to come to me tomorrow again to get another fish. Um, and now the thing is, and this is what, what a good trading education is about, for example, is to make sure that you, that you know what it takes to be a good fisher so that you can make sure that you can get your fishes for yourself and you don't need to come to me all the time. And um, so this here, for example, is, is one perfect example of how important it is to, to, uh, to have, to be not just a, one second, to not just be a, 
well, to not just be an expert on one column here, risk and money management, obviously considering the expected value is about risk and money management, but it's also, for example, a mental thing. And it's also here uh, about having a advantages and, and, and profits per trading strategy. Why? Well, obviously, if you know that you do not have to be right all the time to make money with your trading approach, well, this makes you very calm in your trading. You're not excited and very nervous when taking on a trade and, and that the market has to move in your direction. No, it hasn't. If you, if you have a positive expected value and it's a proven strategy, it's profitable, you just don't care if you're making money on this trade or not because it's, the, it's all trades combined which will make you the money. So it's not just one or 10, but it's 100 trades. And this is exactly the thing here. What, what I did with this, with this, uh, with this um, Monte Carlo, when we distributed Monte Carlo simulation, for example. So the, you see here, well, obviously, there was a time when, when, the money, when, when you lost money here. It was a short period of time, but still, you, you lost money here. And then finally, well, after 50 pr trades, boom, you made money. Just imagine you started out here and you lost nearly 10% of your, of, your, of your account in immediately, even though, you know, after 500 trades, you come out ahead. If you can stabilize those, those um, uh, statistical values, and if you know that you're trading within a statistical edge, and this is what trading is about, so you don't need to be right all the time, and you don't have to call the direction of the market. But this is, for example, something where, um, yeah, where, no, this is not just an example, but this is where it becomes obvious why trading education and if you're, if you're looking for a mentor or a trading coach or whatever, this guy has to make sure that you really understand in depth and in a structured way what profitable trading is about. Um, since if you don't have this depth and structure, you get a lot of trouble. Because if he just gives a strategy to you, well, that's not worth anything. Since there will be market conditions when a strategy works. For example, uh, I, I've, I've, I've described this here um, um, during the first minutes of this webinar with Stefan together. There was a strategy I, I traded with. It was a simple strategy. It worked, re worked really well. I made 20% with this in one year, one and a half year. Um, I, I've backtested this at night with, with a Kali optimized approach here uh, with, a, with a personalized um, um, position size algorithm, not the easy one we use here, but a more uh, complicated one. But nevertheless, it made, it made tremendous amounts of money. It made, made uh, tripled, I think, the account here. Um, well, and then there was a day where it was a period um, when, when the euro started to behave in a way which didn't fit the strategy anymore. That was, and it's something I can show you here, um, let's look at the Euro USD. Where is it? No, here. Well, what happened? Oh, pushing above 114 now. Crazy. <laughs> um, so what happened? Well, the market obviously started to range here. That's not a market environment where you can uh, profit with a with a with a, um, a trending strategy with a, with a with a trend following approach here. Um, it's like you try to sell ice cream. Uh, at at the South Pole or something, it just won't won't just won't work, and um, so this is the thing here, um, uh, and 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 this is where you have to adapt then accordingly. Probably say, okay, I I step back, probably look for another strategy. Look how ca I can adapt my trading strategy here by um, uh, using good money risk and money management um, 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 techniques here, for example, to make sure that I'm still mentally stable when trading the markets. Okay. Um, Yes, yes, you can definitely. I think I can be happy because I survived all those events, uh, Swiss flash crash, SNB, Brexit, and, and all this. Yes, and I can tell you, um, I've known uh, or I still know um, 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 a money manager, hedge fund manager, and uh, he told me that he got filled on a, a big Euro Swiss franc long position he had um, um, on the 15th of January. Um, he was filled. From a, so he is a professional trader with institutional quotes here, and he got filled um, at 119.60, I think. He got a fill there. Um, he still, to this day, we had we had dinner together. And he told me to this day he just don't know who filled him there. But it, I think I'm not sure. I won't name any any liquidity providers here, but um, it was a big one, and they got a fill there. On 1960, and uh, the next quotes were somewhere I don't know where. So I think he got lucky too, 
Um, and probably if, if he um, hadn't been that lucky here with 11960, with the size of the position, he probably would have been wiped out here or much of the money he's making or managing for his for his clients and uh, so yes you can definitely say you you got lucky here and um, yeah so that's it from my end um, I just hope that you that you enjoyed this this um, this uh, uh, presentation here and uh, talk to you again then next week so as far as I see it we'll um, we'll we'll cover the the market opening of the US markets then um, have a nice evening and uh, if you have any questions, please uh, shoot me a mail. It's uh, Jens, it's jklat here at jk-trading.com um, or contact me via Twitter. I'd, I'd really uh, look forward um, to answer your question. I'd really appreciate it. And um, yeah, so have a nice evening. Um, happy trading. Watch your stops. Talk to you next week then. I look forward to it. Or tomorrow in the morning meeting, 9.30 a.m. GMT. I look forward to it. Have a nice evening. See you and bye-bye.